Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with more eye racing. This time around we're back with another fix series. Of course a couple of days ago we went out in the all new GT4 fixed. However, GT3 Ferrari sprints are, are still where it's at I think on the sim. Week 1 of the new season takes us to the always wonderful Spa Francorchamps circuit. So fingers crossed today, you know, new season. Back in the Ferrari GT3 Evo, I don't want to know how many hours I've spent driving this thing. The new fixed setup, though, does feel like a bit of a handful, of course. The new tyre wear updates and everything like that. I thought this would be a good place to start in GT3. But, yeah, I'm just going to try and get the tyres up to temperature. And then we'll get ready for our qualifying laps. Of course, if you aren't already, please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed to the channel. And, yeah, fingers crossed today. You know, we've had a pretty good run so far in 2022 Season 2. Making some good eye rating gains there. Taking us up over 2.3k. The highest eye rating I've ever had. And I'm sure at some point it will go horribly wrong. Anyway, let's just get the tides up to temperature and get ready for our qualifying run. Yeah, the new downforce levels and everything like that. To be honest, around here, the one corner I'm really noticing a big difference is Blanchemont. Definitely feels like the car's a whole lot more loose on turn in there. Of course, where it is mid-engined as well. Certainly doesn't do it any favours. So you can just see there, big, big wobble. This isn't even our qualifying lap, but going to have to be careful of that when we get into the running. Let's get ready then for our first qualifying lap here from Spa. Want to be pushing down, I think, at least into the 218s, but that'll depend on track conditions. Spa's seen a lot of major changes for 2022. They recently uploaded a lap on to their YouTube channel of what the track looks like now. Um, but, yeah, nothing that's completely ruined the circuit in my eyes, but certainly sort of keep it up with the times, I think, which is something that Spa desperately needed to do. See, after a couple of unfortunate incidents over the last couple of years, but corners like our Rouge are very, very difficult to make safe. It's part of the magic behind them to be fair but anyway we need to concentrate more on this lap especially through the twisty bits oh that's going to be first lap gone then that's a little bit annoying but we may as well just keep at it keep plugging away and get ready for our second there we know what we can lean on the car. So just to keep it between the white lines through pull on. But yeah, like I was saying though, Spa major changes come in for real life 2022. Don't know how long it would be before we see these changes implemented into iRacing in the future. I think desperately we need a few more sort of modern FIA grade 1 circuits on the platform before we worry about anything like, you know, get Bahrain on, get Malaysia on. So that would be a brilliant track to see on iRacing, you know, Istanbul as well, and of course a few other places dotted around the globe. iRacing certainly aren't struggling to make money at the moment, I can't imagine, with the boom from Covid, so it's just a case of trying to ship people out, I suppose. Anyway, through Blanchemont again, you can see it is still pinned, but it just gives you that little bit of uncertainty, but let's just set ourselves up for our second run.
little bit of a horrible run out in, of Stavolo, but got to just keep trying to maintain as much speed as we possibly can. Just a couple more corners to go then of this lap. Hasn't felt bad, but it hasn't felt brilliant either for the most part. So that was probably one of the better lines I've got through Blanchemont. No point putting it up into sixth in towards Farnish Kane. Felt like I broke a little bit too late. Never actually didn't scroll off enough speed in through the bus stop. But out of the final corner, shortest run back towards the line. I think that's going to be probably a 218-219. Yeah, 218-9 there. Not where I wanted to be. Only 10th on the grid at very best. But there's a lot more pace in the car. And Ferrari sprints are always entertaining anyway. Right, well, here we are then, ready on the grid for this 15-minute sprint race from Spa. And we've got a Ferrari alongside us and a McLaren starting on the road just in front. So definitely, definitely know who we're going to be trying to fight with today. Not not sure, based on what I've seen so far from F1 2022, uh, that Williams are going to be able to do that in real life. But you never know. Yeah, let's just wait and see, though, ready for the start of this one. We're going to have to concentrate off the start. We need a few places to gain eye rating here. Starting P11 as the number two car. And yeah, fingers crossed, like I said, there's often a bit of carnage, you know, Eau Rouge lap one, up the camel straight. Could see a little bit of instance there as, fingers crossed, we're about to go green. Green, green, green. Almost picked up a 1x immediately, but it is green flag racing here at Spa there. And we kind of got a bit lucky, the fact the guy that was meant to be on the row in front of us got really boxed in in towards the bus stop. Oh, this guy a bit slow in towards T1 there. Ferrari tries to show the nose behind, but let's just see if everyone makes it through a Rouge first time round. A Rouge and Radion, all clean and tidy. There is the leader, already trying to streak away. Seems like there's a bit of a gap in front of the two cars, just in front of me there. But yeah, these GT3 cars now really grip up, up over a Rouge pretty tidy. There, as you can see, the slipstream as well. Just that little bit more potent, it feels like, as we head up the back straight. Everyone weaving this way and that. Trying to find some real estate up in towards the chicane. As we head Starts in. all right. Let's build on it. Number 17 in front of us just runs a little bit wide there. Gets a little bit offline. Unfortunately, we've got nowhere to go, as I think, really, at the moment. This little gaggle of cars probably needs to work together. To close back up to that groove. Ferrari car behind us, though. Seems feisty. Early on. Showing the nose. Wanting to just state his intent. Oh, we've already got yellow flags out though. Someone's had issues. Might have been in behind us by the looks of it. Doesn't seem like there's been any chaos just up in front. So I think there were a couple of them going side by side down in towards Puon. We're just really, really struggling to get the car tipped in there. Don't really know why. But I feel like that's where we're losing a couple of tenths to a lot of cars. And yeah, just I think, you know, everyone trying to get used to the new GT3 handling model. It does take a couple of races, I fear to get into it but yeah we also need some SR today we've been hemorrhaging SR over the last couple of races down to 4.1 I mean the Porsche Cup one a lot of that wasn't really my fault unfortunately someone kept running into the back of me which wasn't very helpful I think we picked up eight instant points from that and yeah the other race we did in the GT4s was just me not being very very good around the Red Bull ring let's just tip it in sick gear there especially in the dirty air Losing just that little bit of confidence still in the car. So a couple of locked brakes there. Pink Ferrari runs a little bit wide. It's going to Constantina up. The Monster Energy car there. So 17 is going to say thank you very much. And Ivan has been disposed of in that situation for him. We are up into the top 10 though. As I think that guy thought I was actually going to send it in towards turn 1. Just leaves us with nowhere to go though on the exit of the corner, so may as well try and see if we can get a big slingshot up the Camel straight once more. There's see everyone sneaking through. Yeah, it really just looks like the leader is the only one that's been able to break free. It's all getting a little bit out of shape. They're just turning in a bit too early as we head out now. Everyone's still lying astern, though. A couple of people trying to break the toe. So we'll try and get every little bit of slipstream we possibly can from Ivan. That a little bit more under braking, but still difficult with the brakes on these GT3s. You, know, you can't lean on them like you can on most sims still. And that just takes some getting used to as well, of course. Coming back on tie racing there is definitely not want to do that. But yeah, 
just trying to settle down into a rhythm. I mean, it's only going to be a seven lap race here. And around Spa, that doesn't feel like long at all. Probably helped by the fact I love this circuit, but yeah, it doesn't really open up. I mean, Spa's not a bad track for racing by any means, but it just makes you feel like, of course, where it is lower laps, you're going to get less and less chances to really make any magic happen. Because I think, yeah, we need P9 here if we want to try and gain any eye racing. So we need to be trying to just get that little bit closer to Ivan again, just in front of us. We need to be hitting our marks. That was not a bad run out of Savalo there as we head up the hill back in towards Blanchemont and the bus stop. Yeah, still a lot of battles going on at the road there, but I feel like I'm kind of hang on as much as anything else early on here. There we go. That was finally a good line through there. As you can see, Ivan in front of us gets a little bit shaky. Tip it in, tip it in, tip it in. Hang on. As we head out in the final corner, though, no places gained on lap two. But we are definitely slowly but surely getting to grips with this thing, and I think Ivan, if anywhere. Oh, someone's not happy. Has there been some carnage? Might have been some incident somewhere. Don't know if it was in front or behind. Still a big train of us. I'm trying now not to hit that curb too hard on the inside there. Ivan doesn't get the best run. Now, as you can see, yeah, the guy behind us, Thomas, just struggling a little bit more as we head back at the Camel Straight once more. I think I uh, no, it's Andres. Why has he got Ivan on the back of his car there? I'm guessing he's just nicked some random streamers. <laughs> he's just promoting a random streamer by the looks of it then. Close to a 1x. Never really sure if first gear is the way to go into there, but I do not want to try second and wash out. Trying to sort of let the car roll a bit more as well. But it's not always the way to go. Right in front, runs very, very wide. What is he doing? It's all over the show. This might be a chance. He keeps doing this. He's just losing his concentration a little bit. We can just keep hitting our marks. Look at that. He's just not anywhere where he wants to be at the moment. Not positioning that car where he should. And sometimes that's horrible when you get a few corners like that. And you just sort of need to regroup, refocus. And this is why it's so important if you're watching someone in front of you doing that. That you've just got to lean on him really fill the mirrors, apply the pressure there as you can still see this gaggle of five or so of us. Into watch one once more. There we go. I feel like we're finally getting the knack of that. It's down in towards the bus stop again. Just fill his mirrors. That's what we got to do at the moment. You know, a really nice run out the final corner though as we struggle to put the power down. Well, that's a bit more of a representative of the pace we have got in the car, though. Down towards a mid-18. But I think we're going to start seeing battles up the road, though. We've got to try and play that wisely. And sort of watch it unfold. As, yeah, what is happening? So the gap's behind us. Looks like Thomas just can't keep up. And then, I guess in the instance, uh, the car's behind him, as that might be a 1x. No, it looks like we got away with it again. Just see everyone again pulls right over to the right hand side of the circuit trying to go defensive on each other. We just drop back slightly through those first few corners. Ooh, it's very, very close there at the end of the Kemmel Street. It looks like, yeah, the guy that was at the front of this little train might have been given a lifeline here. It's all just getting a little bit more aggressive there. Oh, I thought the pink car was going around that time. We hung on to it. I think again, we've just kind of got to wait. Where's this guy going? Oh, big wobble. I want to say thank you very much. He's yeah, just going to lift out of it. Thank you. And that will be P9. That's what I This guy in front runs a little bit wide as well. Now we've got to see if we can start picking people off a bit more. I don't think he is. Got to get there. A little puff of dust. Someone kicks up the sand on the inside. 
through the Fanya chicane. has lost a bit of confidence with all of that. So we've got to try and stay in the slipstream of these two in front of us. Because if they continue to battle, they might be easy pickings. Just got to be careful. Oh, there we go. Side by side and towards the bus stop. That's what we love to see. 17 thinks better of it. Oh, we could have almost got ourselves to the inside there, I think. Not sure it would have been the right move, but it could have been a bit of an opportunistic one. There's definitely still a lot of swapping around going on at the moment. Leader has ran away. So critical you get a good run off that first corner. Side by side just up the road. I think they've slotted back in. You can do side by side into here in an LMP2 car. Did that a couple of seasons ago. Do not fancy it in a GT3, though. Well, they did go three wide in real life a couple of years back, didn't they? As so now, again, myself and the 17 closing in on the 18 car up the Kemmel Straight. They're going to go side by side again. I think they are. We're going to have to wait in the wings. Oh, look at that. Door to door. The 18 defends for now, but there's so many battles going on everywhere at the moment. It's what you love to see. 17 just struggling a little bit as we head down the hill. I think we've still just got to play patient game. Yeah, because if we start battling with the 17 too hard, we could see the guys in front really break away as everyone else around us. It's definitely picking up a few instant points here. I'm still somehow on a 0x. Not sure how long that'll last. So that's... There we go. <laughs> I jinxed it. I did completely jinx myself. That'll be first 1x of the day, and hopefully the only, but we'll wait and see. So a big, big tip of understeer as we head in towards Fangies again. I'm trying to short shift off there. I don't think it's the right thing to do, but I don't know why, but it just seems like you can get the car towards the apex just that a little bit more. It just seems slightly easier flat. Not trying to upshift as you head out onto the straight. Let's just go again, though. I think we got two more. <laughs> two more laps to go. And that's what I mean about Launchamont. You take your focus off it for one second there as well. There we go. Big send coming in from the 18. Car left. Clear left. Oh, we must have got super close there to contact. It's all starting to get a little bit spicy here. Two laps to go. Of the Ferrari sprint. We just got to try and get. <laughs> Love that. That's going to cost us a little bit of downforce. No idea what Dommy was doing. I think that's upset both myself and David. Now we're both going to try and look for something. Doesn't seem like it's affected our top end speed though all too much. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to try and start picking cars off if opportunities open up now, later on in the day. Front a little bit wide there, but get away with it. of the 17. Probably just got to get that a little bit closer. Just see they're all just using track limits. One more lap after this one though. Are we going to see any last lap moves, things like that? Desperation might be beginning to set in. I feel like it is for me as well, to be honest. I don't feel like it's a massive short shift on the exit there, but it's definitely more than I'd like it to be. So we head up... Where are we going? 
Don't do that. That's such an easy 1x to pick up. It seems stupid, but I've done it so many times before. It's gaining, gaining, gaining on the 17. Super, super smooth on the steering. Are we close enough to go for a send? No, he just places the car a foot defensively there, making it very clear there was no chance for me to do anything there. Big kick of oversteer at the final corner as we try and lay all of these Italian horsepower back into the ground. To go. The lap time was at 219.58. Let's see how this unfolds then. Really got to concentrate still. Who knows who can get a run and who might be able to capitalise. I think it already depends on whether the pink car can get a run on P5 in front of him. If they Constantine are up, it's anyone's game behind. He's, he's, he's gaining, gaining, gaining once again there. Other guy goes defensive. Everyone weaving around to get the slipstream. Oh, it's a lot of weaving. Not a fan of that. Looks like he has hung on this time round. So we get all over the back again at the 17. I think that's a really nice run on the exit though. Hate to think how many incident points he's picked up today. Well I think yeah this time round if anything opens up we've got to try and send it in towards the bus stop. That's half fuel. You've used half your fuel. Just got to keep it close to him before then, though. That, of course, is the other important thing. That's close to another 1x, but got away with it. Yeah, really, really gutted with that 4x, to be honest. Just messy Constantina and now. But concentrate. Going for a little bit all over the road. 17 though is not getting a car where he needs it. This might now give us a chance in towards the final few corners there. We've really nailed the middle sector. We've got to try and time the run though. Can't get too close too early. Oh no, big, big wobble. Can I look to the inside though? He hasn't gone defensive. Why has he not gone defensive? So we're going to send it super deep there and pick up the place. It had to be an aggressive dive. We couldn't let him get the switch back. And we will claim P8 then in the end there. That was a pretty good end to what... I mean, it wasn't the most action-packed race, but it was a lot of close racing. And sometimes that's what you need in at the Ferrari sprint there. But good first race back in the GT3s then with all the new tweaks and changes. Always interesting to see... How you get on there, but 11th to 8th in the end, 59 rating as well, and hopefully a bit of SR with only the five instant points. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do please make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more iRacing.